Numerical Computation, Chapter Eleven, Video Five. In this video, we'll consider a new type of boundary condition, that is Neumann boundary condition, still from the Laplace equation, on a unit square. So um, that's the um, Laplace equation, and this is the unit square, and we kept the conditions for these three sides the same, but we changed the boundary condition here in red. So along this boundary, the function u is not given. Instead, the u derivative in x is given on this boundary. And then y varies here, x equals to 0, so this is some function of y. Okay. So um, this changes quite a bit, the discretization. So um, one important thing here is that now we have more numbers of unknowns because the u value on one side of the boundary is not given. So the values where u have index i equals to zero will be taken into my ordering. If we go through natural ordering, and then this will be the ordering we will have. So now v1 will be this value, and you go through a sweep, there are four unknowns here, you end up with V4, and then V5 will be this boundary value, and you go through and you get V8 to the end, and then V9 will be this boundary, and then you go through. So um, total number of unknown here become 12. So um, the central final difference for the second derivative is the second order method. And it's desirable for us to approximate the boundary condition, which is the first derivative, also using a second order central finite difference. We have encountered this before, um, how to deal with the central finite difference at the boundary. So the common strategy here will be adding a layer of ghost boundary. So we will add u negative 1 j let i to be negative 1 for that boundary and j goes through 1 to n minus 1. Okay. Then you can apply a central final difference for the boundary condition. So u sub x, the x derivative at 0, y j will be using the u1 value j and minus u negative 1 j divided by 2h. Okay, and it says this shall equal to a evaluate at yj, and let's just call this aj. So you can solve this equation for u negative 1j, that's the ghost boundary, and you can write u negative 1j in terms of the others, and this is what you will have. So you multiply both sides by 2h and move this term to the other side of the equation and stand alone, and that's all. So um, you can also assume that the Laplace equation holds at i equals to 0, or x equals to 0, and you s write out the discrete Laplace equation for i equals to 0. So this gives us u negative 1j minus 4u 0j plus u 1j plus u 0j minus 1 and plus u 0j plus 1 equal to 0. So now we have two equations. One is this one, and one is that one. And both contain the um, ghost. So we can get rid of the ghost by substituting this one in here. Okay, And if you do that, you can get rid of the ghost. So this will be the new equation that we have. So um, the term here is just this guy here. Okay. And you can further um, simplify a little bit. You could, uh, you see this is a source term. This moves to the right-hand side. And the u1j could join the u1j and you get a coefficient 2. Okay, so cleaning up. And this is what we have. So this will be the equation for all the i's where i equals to 0. Then this will be the equation one would use. 
So, of course, all the equations are linear equations, and we can always write it into a system of linear equation using matrix vector form. So, here now, um, a matrix still has a block structure, and it's a 3 by 3 block, and in each block, it has a 4 by 4 square matrix. Okay, and then for for the diagonal element here, I will have a matrix that's tridiagonal, negative four on the diagonal, and the one on the lower diagonal. But uh, on the upper diagonal, this first equation contains the um, Neumann boundary condition, so this becomes negative four too. That's the equation we just derived in the previous page. Okay, and uh, whoops, and that shall be a one positive one. Okay, and then um, all the diagonal blocks are the same, and the upper diagonal is identity matrix, and the lower diagonal is identity matrix. So we see that overall the A still preserve the blocked tridiagonal structure. So here is how the load vector B looks like. So um, the terms coming from the Neumann boundary condition are the ones that I circle, and the rest come from the Dirichlet boundary condition. Okay, so um, if um, n shall be bigger, you form the A matrix and the B vector in a completely similar way. So hopefully the pattern is clear. Hope this is useful, you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.